this is a common injury that happens to a lot of us. I've suffered through it. A lot of my friends at the gym have suffered through it. And there are some really easy ways to combat this and fix it. But if you don't know what they are, you can go months and months of months and have a lot of pain in your elbows and it can really affect your training, how much weight you're lifting, and your overall mentality in the gym. And we don't want that. So Josh from Colossus Fitness and I are going to share with you six quick tips to help you start eliminating tennis elbow now. So for the first tip, it's all about warming up. With the tennis elbow, a lot of people will find that they get this issue because they're not warming up their body before exercise. And chances are, if you're experiencing the tennis elbow, you might have pain and soreness in other areas. These first two tips are going to talk about preventative measures to avoid it altogether. So first and foremost, it's imperative that you guys are doing a warm-up. We really recommend a LISP warm-up. That's low intensity steady state cardio. You can execute this by any method of cardio. You're not taxing yourself too hard. You are just getting the blood flowing in your body. That's it. Plain and simple. Past that, one thing we highly recommend, and this is imperative, is that you don't jump into high stress loads immediately. If you have a tennis elbow and you go and you're about to bench press 315 pounds, that's probably not a good idea. You have a cold elbow and you're just going to toss 315 pounds, that's crazy amounts of stress and that's what's going to hurt it. Whereas if you can do a lighter warm up as you can see me here doing with the bench, I'm just getting the blood flowing and I'm warming up progressively to my maximal weight. Alright guys, so tip number two actually relates a lot to what Josh just said and it has to do with performing dynamic stretches before starting your workout. Now obviously what stretches you're going to do is going to highly depend on what you're training for that day. I mean at the end of the day it's probably a good idea to do a lot of these no matter what you're doing just to keep things loose throughout the week. But for example, if you guys are doing an upper body workout where you're doing a lot of exercises that push through the shoulders and the elbows, here are some stretches that you can try to do before starting the actual movements. The first one is arm circles. Very simple guys, you're going to stand up straight with your arms out by your sides and you're going to take turns rotating them clockwise and counterclockwise until your shoulders feel nice and warmed up. Usually 10 rotations forward and 10 rotations backward is enough to get them nice and loose and just do one to two sets. Another thing you can try doing is shoulder slaps. And this is basically like giving yourself an aggressive hug. And as you do the shoulder slaps, you're basically going to alternate which arm is on top and which one's on the bottom. And again, for this, 10, maybe 15 repetitions, two sets. Some other great things you can do for specifically the elbows, one of my favorite things is a really light single arm dumbbell overhead extension. And I'm talking really light guys. Get a five pound dumbbell, maybe even a three pound dumbbell if they have one, and just really focus on keeping your arm as vertical as possible and going all the way down and all the way up with the movement. Again, couple sets, 10, 15 reps per arm. If you're doing lower body warm ups, some great things that you can do, one is called butt kicks. And to do a butt kick, basically get to stand in one place and literally jump in the air, alternating kicking yourself in your butt with your heels and just go side to side, 10 to 15 reps per side, two sets of this. And another great one, and this is actually what I do all the time, and this really helps me get into the mindset when I'm going to squat, is I like to do air squats. And air squats are going to allow you to really warm up the hips, warm up your knees, and then also get you in the mindset of going ass to grass on those squats, because you guys know how important it is and how much I stress going ass to grass when doing your squats, guys. So simple warm ups like these can help drive blood to the area, help get things nice and loose, and help to eliminate some pain you might have in your workout. Tip number three is remove bad habits from your training. Now you guys might have noticed that Josh and I kind of touched on a wide variety of things for tips one and two, and that's just because we want to make sure you guys are really, you know, getting the, getting the point that you need to warm up your body overall when you work out. Not just what hurts, okay? Even if your elbows don't hurt, you should still be doing these warm ups to make sure you don't get an injury in the future and apply that to your entire body. Now, as far as removing bad habits from your workouts, what I mean by this, there's always a debate of whether or not you should fully extend on exercises, okay? Because it can cause pain in the elbow. But there's a big difference between having a controlled lockout and snapping your elbows. Now let's think, why do they call it tennis elbow? What actually happens in tennis that causes all that pain? Well, when you swing the racket, if you lock out your arm at the same time you're driving the force forward, 
that snap, that constant snap in the elbow is what's causing all that pain over time. Now, if you're doing a controlled bench press and you're focusing on mind-muscle connection and going all the way to the top and locking out and then coming down, there's no snap happening. There's no hyperextension in the elbow happening. But if you're doing your sets and you're throwing the weight up and down like this as fast as you can, chances are when you're getting to the top, you're doing a little bit of a hyperextension that you don't even realize you're doing and that's what's causing pain over time. Also too, a lot of people tend to get sloppy on their last repetition when they do their exercises. So for example, if you're dumbbell bench pressing, you do a nice and controlled movements, but then when it comes time to put the dumbbells down, you bring them down like this and just kind of like throw them to the ground and you're doing like 100 pound dumbbell presses, you're basically taking 100 pounds of force and going like this and snapping your elbow and obviously it's going to cause some pain over time. Or even if you're doing tricep extensions, you know, if you're going down too quick and you're snapping it at the bottom every single time, that's going to cause pain in your elbow over time because you're getting that tiny bit of hyperextension at the bottom. And then when you're done your repetitions, let's say you're doing nice controlled motions on every single repetition, so you're not hyperextending the elbow, you're not snapping the elbow, but then as soon as you're done, you just kind of like fling the weights up into the air, that sudden like let go and then catch at the top could be putting some force, unwanted force in that elbow area as well, which can cause some pain. So it's really about being smart what you're training and not just being smart during the movement, but also be smart in how you end it as well. Tip number four guys, and this one is a huge one. This goes into everything. You need to listen to your body. With any injury, you really need to make sure you're listening to your body's signals. It's going to tell you when you can actually continue and when it's time to stop. But one thing I want to make incredibly clear is that there are two different ends of the spectrum. There's discomfort and there's pain. Sometimes there's a fine line to try to be able to figure out which side you are on, but you need to listen. Discomfort is okay. You need to be able to push through discomfort. You need to overcome the un, like uneasiness you'll feel sometimes when doing the exercise, especially if you're injured with tendonitis. To overcome it and break down that scar tissue, you need to make sure that you're actively performing the exercise. On the other end, however, there is pain. And if you have shocking, tough, hard pain, you really need to listen to your muscle and perhaps try tapering down the weight, tapering down the volume, trying an alternate exercise. But what you want to make sure you are not doing is stopping the exercise in total. This is something very bad and a lot of people will find it as an excuse. They'll get hurt and they'll go, I can't go to the gym, I'm done working out. And you're going to inhibit yourself and put yourself into a place where you're not allowing yourself to actually exercise and become better and you're just going to think that you're stuck, maimed and injured and that's not something you want. You want to come in, do your best, listen to your body and push through it. Alright guys, for the fifth tip, this is going to be our first restorative tip and this is very important. If you're feeling pain in your elbow after your workout, you're going to want to make sure you go ahead, go home and follow the RICE principle. Rest, ice, compress and elevate. I'm sure you guys have heard this many times in health class or whatever it be, but you want to make sure you're following this post-workout. Past that, there's some other really good natural methods you can do like ice baths and things of that nature. We don't really recommend taking an excessive amount of drugs to deal with a small pain that you may have in your arm. So you guys are going to want to make sure you're going and icing it after every workout that you feel this pain. This is your best source to prevent future pain with your tennis elbow. And the sixth and final tip to help you guys combat tennis elbow or tendonitis of the elbow is to really know what the source of the pain is. I see a lot of people when, they ha when their elbow hurts, they literally just kind of take that one area and stop massaging that area. And you might be guilty of this too. You could be sitting at your computer right now and your elbow hurts and that's why you're watching this video and you're just rubbing this area hoping that's going to alleviate the pain. But unfortunately guys, it's not that simple. That's not how your body works. If you, need, if you want to figure out exactly where the source of the pain is coming from, you need to start stretching your entire body. For example, when I go see my massage therapist, because I get injuries in my shoulders, in my elbows, I get tightness in the same areas that you guys get, a lot of what she's taught me is that it's usually other areas of your body that are pulling and causing the pain to happen. So for example, you could have pain throughout your back and your shoulder and all those muscles pulling is causing like a chain reaction that's pulling all the way down through your entire arm and it just happens to be the source of pain is right here. So you could literally have tightness in your back or your shoulder 
but the pain is happening in your elbow because all those muscles and tendons are so tight that everything's pulling this way, everything's pulling that way at the same time. So it really comes down to knowing your body and that's why it's so important to make sure you guys get things like foam rollers or you can get things like lacrosse balls and try to loosen up your entire body instead of just trying to focus on that one area because as I'm sure many of you have noticed by now if you just sit there and rub your elbow all day, it never gets better and it never will. So really know your body and if you need to, set up, a massage, set up an appointment to go see a sports massage therapist and they can really try to figure out exactly what's happening inside your body and believe it or not, after one or two visits, it's going to be like a night and day difference. You could be suffering from tennis elbow for months and go see someone who knows what they're doing and feel like a totally new person even after one session. Believe me, it works. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you didn't check out the one we did on how to fix your shoulders, how to fix your posture, make sure you check that, out, that one out as well. And definitely make sure you're giving these videos lots of likes, guys. Really show that love. I don't know if you know this, but the YouTube algorithm is always changing. And a lot of times it look for videos that are getting a lot of views and a lot of likes. So we need to really start boosting that number up if you guys want to see more good content. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys. One thing I see very often is a lot of people just kind of go through the motion without actually feeling the contraction in their lats. Um, so number one tip I have for you guys is to almost feel like you're driving your elbows down into your butt. Or another thing is you could imagine that you're squeezing a tennis ball in between your scapula.